Hello everyone, thanks for joining today's fur video. We're having a little sneak peek at autumn 2019 for today's uh, fur video. So we've released a summer forecast at Gaz Office. The video is currently on the home page and later on it's going to be placed on the summer forecast play, uh, page with a written summary as well. It's an interesting forecast. We're going for a uh, pretty warm summer, a lot of dry weather in there as well, we think. Uh, maybe a hot August. So do have a look at the uh, summer forecast uh, when you finish with our autumn sleep peak. But as the um, summer forecast is released now, it's time for the long-range bandwagon to roll on. We never stop at gas like this. And so summer forecast is uh, done and dusted. It's time to start rolling on to the next season of, of, of uh, updates, of long-range updates, which will, of course, be for the autumn. So I'm going to do a little sneak peek uh, to set the scene for the uh, autumn updates that are going to be commencing um next week. First update for the autumn will be on the 2nd of June. Uh, also, Gaz of his Sunny Router was released earlier on today. That video is also on the home page, so do have a look at that uh, as well when you're finished with this video. Right, so the autumn. Well, we're going to be looking at... Uh, I'm going to go through the various things we're going to be looking at. May I have a look at a few seasonal uh, models. So we're going to be keeping close eye on what's happening in the oceans. We have the Enso region, of course. The Enso region is just here and at the moment we are in a weak and declining uh, El Nino. Will that decline of El Nino continue through the summer and into the autumn? Uh, if it does, uh, what will the impacts of that be? Could we see El Nino starting to take off again? And uh, could we even go into a cold event? Could we even go into a La Nina? In the uh, Atlantic we see that it's uh, starting to become quite warm in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. Could that uh, be indicative of a more active hurricane season? If we if we are going to go into a more active hurricane season through this summer and into the autumn, what could the impacts of that be uh, on the autumn? So I'll be keeping a close eye on the oceans to see uh, what's uh, going on there. As I said, be keeping a close eye on the Enso region at the moment. CFSV2 is forecasting that we're going to go from a very weak El Nino, such as, we, uh, such as we're at at the moment, into uh, Enso neutral condition through the summer and into the autumn. There is a chance, though, we might go into a cold event. You see one or two of these ensemble crew members within the CFS V2 ensemble are going down in towards La Nina territory. At the moment, they are just outliers. They are not well supported, certainly not supported by the ensemble mean. Uh, but ever um, week by week, uh, ever more incrementally, uh, it does appear that more and more of these uh, ensemble members within the CFS V2 ensemble plume starting to shift towards the possibility anyway of a card event. If we did flip into a landing, what impacts could that have uh, on uh, on the autumn? We'll be, we'll be looking at all of that through uh, reanalysis, of course, in our autumn analogues updates. We're also keeping a very close eye on solar activity. We are very, very close to solar minimum now. This is solar disk on our side of disk today. From SoHam.net, no sunspots, indicative of where we are in the solar cycle at the moment. We are uh, perilously close now to uh, solar minimum. In fact, solar minimum might occur through this autumn. So obviously, through reanalysis, we're going to be looking to see what impacts uh, solar minimum could have on the autumn. Also, the QBO, we'll be keeping a look, we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Uh, so, we're in the westerly phase of the uh, QBO at the moment, indicated on this uh, chart by these grey areas. This is 2019, of course. So, we're in a um, mature uh, westerly QBO uh, now. The westerly QBO will probably reach its peak through this summer. Actually, it may happen at the beginning of the autumn. Through the autumn, we will probably see a decline of the Wesley QBO in terms of its strength. But we should stay in the Wesley QBO uh, through this autumn. But I imagine uh, as we as the autumn progresses, it will uh, weaken. So again, through reanalysis, we're going to have a look and see uh, what uh, the autumns are like when they are in mature westerly QBOs and also when they're in declining uh, westerly 
QBO. So that will be something we'll be focusing on, of course, through our uh, updates. We'll also be keeping a very, very close eye on uh, the summer itself. So we'll be keeping a close eye on uh, the summer weather patterns. We'll be doing a little bit of pattern matching, I would imagine, for uh, the patterns that we get through June, July and August. We're going to uh, also be looking at um, the temperature and precipitation anomalies that we get with this summer on a month-by-month -month basis and seeing what uh, happened in autumn's following months that had similar uh, sort of patterns and also temperature and precipitation and we'll be doing that uh, through this uh, season of autumn updates as well and of course there will also be the long range models so let's have a look at one or two of those before we go this is CANSIPS this is the CANSIPS mean sea level pressure anomaly for the autumn of uh, 2019 and uh, looking a little bit unsettled actually some low pressure down to our south, maybe hints at a bit of high pressure towards Iceland, so possibly something uh, a little bit more unsettled for the autumn. Temperature anomalies with CANSIP for the autumn of 2019 coming out uh, a bit uh, warmer than average, on the than average side. Precipitation anomalies with uh, CANSIPS coming out close to average, a little bit dry on average to the north of us, though. Again, that could be a bit indicative of some high pressure sitting uh, to the north of the uh, UK, maybe. This is what CFSV2 is forecasting for the autumn of 2019 uh, right now. So this is 700 millibar height anomaly. It's going for above average heights to be to the north, northeast of the UK, below average heights in the middle of the North Atlantic. Um, so probably quite a lot of settled weather with that, bringing in easterly winds, you would have thought, could be uh, a rather easterly autumn. Temperature anomalies from CFSV2 for this autumn uh, being forecast to be uh, warmer than average across much of northern Europe for UK is included in that. Precipitation anomalies looking rather dry as well, which of course you'd expect with high pressure sitting somewhere around here. So quite an anticyclonic, relatively mild and dry autumn. Of course, autumn is a transitional season. So uh, high pressure over Scandinavia and east winds in September are going to be dry and potentially warm or very warm. High pressure and easterly winds over Scandinavia in uh, November will be dry, yes, but will also be an awful lot colder. Autumn, of course, is very much a transitional season. Jamstech uh, temperature anomaly for the autumn of 2019 is currently being forecast to be significantly warmer than average, not just for the UK, but for most parts of uh, Europe as well. And precipitation anomalies from Jamstech looking rather dry, so maybe going for a high pressure dominated, uh, dry and relatively warm autumn there. Beijing Climate Centre hasn't updated uh, for this month, but uh, last month the Beijing Climate Centre was forecasting this with its 500 millibar height anomaly for the autumn of 2019. It's going for above average heights to be through the Atlantic into the UK and the jet stream would be uh, pushed northwards. So that would leave us with a milder, a warmer than average autumn. Beijing Climate Centre uh, was correct on that. And the temperature, the precipitation normally I should say, uh, would be a little bit uh, wet to an average to the north as the jet stream is starting to invigorate due to the time of the year. But down in the south, it would be a little bit on the dry on average side. And then finally, the UK Met Office, Glow C5, means sea level pressure anomaly for August, September, October. Not yet quite covering the full autumn period, but it will do so from uh, next month. And it's looking rather anti-cyclonic, actually, for the end of the summer and into the autumn. High pressure across the UK and much of uh, Western and Northern Europe for jet stream is pushed off up there. Maybe hints of some late summer war, perhaps temperature anomalies from August to October forecast to be... Uh, quite significantly above average. Precipitation anomalies, a little bit on the unsettled side, but more particularly to the north and west of the UK. So I reckon that the UK Met seasonal model could be going for a rather warm and relatively dry end to the summer and start to the spring. Right, so that's it for your little sneak peek uh, for the autumn of 2019. This is just to let you know that autumn updates are about to commence. A long-range bandwagon is going to roll on, as I said, with release of summer forecasts next week, uh, Sunday the 2nd of June. That will be the day of the first autumn 2019 updates. Uh, 
and then we'll do more updates for the autumn throughout the rest of the summer, culminating, of course, in the Gaz of his autumn forecast, which will be released at the end of August. So buckle up, we're about to enter into another season of long range updates, this time for the autumn of 2019. Uh, and there we go. So I uh, hope you enjoy this little sneak peek for the autumn of 2019. Don't forget to check out Gaz on his sunny roundup and the summer forecast. Tomorrow we got the historic video looking at uh, 2012, primarily the summer, but beginning in the winter of 2011-2012, going right way through to the early autumn of 2012. All right, that's all for now. Come back next Sunday for the first Autumn 2019 update. Don't forget to check out all the other updates I've talked about in this video. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.